Good evening. The courts are still dealing with the mayhem and criminality of the riots that beset London and other cities two weeks ago. And the aftermath is still traumatic. In Manchester and Salford, 20 police officers were injured. 155 fires were started. At four of them, fire crews were attacked and had to withdraw. Seven fire engines were damaged with bricks. And 100 shops and premises were looted and smashed up. The 47 charges included recklessly endangering life, assaulting a police officer, burglary and criminal damage. Mancunians could not believe the appalling scenes of violence and wanton destruction in their much-loved city, and neither could the rest of us. The debate is still raging about why the riots happened and why these criminals relished the destruction. The senior police officer in charge of the video evidence of the attacks on the Arndale Centre called the perpetrators feral rats. Donald McIntyre's report contains strong language. Everything just started escalating. People just started coming out of everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Sam, be bold, Twitter. Get on Facebook, send a message, get down to Manchester. Hoods up, masks on, just going absolute crazy. I was buzzing, man, yeah. just smashing windows and police cars and stuff. There was nothing that the police could do. It was an overwhelming sense of power. On the 9th of August 2011, the mob took control of the centre of one of England's biggest cities. This is their story. Two weeks on from the violence which consumed Manchester, Britain is still coming to terms with how quickly civil society broke down up and down the country. Who were the rioters? Who were the looters? And where did they come from? We came to Manchester to find out. Salford, the district where the trouble first ignited. Jamie Darrington told us everyone was watching what was happening in London, that a distinct sense of unease had been building all morning. Everything just started escalating. You know, people just started coming out of everywhere, shops, you know, coming out of their homes, odds up, everything, you know. People running up the subway, smashing bottles. I mean, look at the state of it down there already, you know. And that's a couple of weeks afterwards, you know. You've got people trying to rip shutters off Tesco. You've got people trying to rip shutters off subway. Chemists getting broken into, you know. Everything, just every little business. Really. And who was doing it? Every, everyone who lives around here. Jamie watched in amazement as hundreds of men, women and children descended on the shopping precinct, many setting out on a path of destruction. Jamie received message after message asking him to join in. He didn't. Police were attacked, as was a cameraman making this recording. Send a message out on Facebook, send a message out on Twitter, you know, send a message out on whatever social networking site, BBM, you know, just normal text messages grouped together, you know, let's go rob a shop, let's go rob Tesco. Now, when we say everybody was kind of doing it, um, are you talking like mothers and fathers and uncles, you know, saying, you know... It's We're talking about families pulling up in cars and filling the car boots with food and filling the car boots with whatever they can take. But the majority of the people were 14 to 25 year olds running around, hoods up, masks on, just going absolutely crazy. And there was no sense that a race was involved. This is a predominantly white area. Yeah, it, to be honest with you, the majority of it was white people. You know, there weren't any black people who, who were around there rioting. You know, there might have been the odd few, but it was white people. And why were they doing it? Was it anger? Was it poverty? Was it just a day out? Anger, poverty, because they could. Greater Manchester Police drafted officers from all over the city to combat the violence in Salford. Drivers panicked as they tried to escape the anarchy. It took police nearly four hours to stabilise the situation. The trouble here sucked in a huge amount of police resources and numbers, leaving the centre of Manchester very vulnerable. It wasn't long before people took advantage and the anarchy spread like wildfire. Two miles away, crowds began gathering in Manchester's Piccadilly Gardens. Trouble seemed inevitable. 
Everyone we spoke to emphasised how rioters use their phones to connect in advance of the disorder. You go out, get on the phone, get on Facebook, send a message, get down to Manchester, send to every contact in your phone book. And I think that's what happened, to be honest, because there was no way that that amount of people got down here that fast. At 5.20, it arrived. People stormed up Market Street, forcing shoppers and commuters to run for cover. The Arndale Centre, the commercial jewel in the city's crown, came under siege. And the police just managed to push them back. But the mob, including children, was by now hundreds strong, some say thousands. They broke into shops, attacked cars and targeted the police. Fire engines drove past arsonists. Looters flaunted their stolen goods in front of lines of policemen. The extraordinary and unpalatable truth is that for 12 hours, one of the country's biggest and most important cities was lawless and out of control. Your adrenaline must have been Cody Lachey was caught up in the frenzy. An ex-soldier, he served two tours in Afghanistan. I've seen a lot of stuff in my life, uh, from being in the army stuff, but I'd never seen anything that, like that that night. It was, when, when you go to war, there's rules. Here, there was no rules. It was say what you can get, get what you can take. And if it's not, if it's not pinned, if it's not literally tied down, take it. He says he didn't loot, but he admits that he was part of the mob. People were running in every different direction. People were running in, people were running away, different directions. People with handfuls of stuff, people with TVs, people with bags, people dragging suitcases which had looted. It was, it was mental. It was carnage. It was complete and utter carnage. So, you know, you were surrounded by looters. Some of them were your mates. Right? Yeah, yeah, you know, of course, yeah. You're saying that it was so lawless that looters were presenting and taunting yeah, police officers with yeah. their stolen goods. Yeah. Normally, normally, any other day, they would run away. But that day, there was, there was that many of them and stuff like that. The, 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 the police didn't have the power, the people had the power, and the people were turning up to the police and going, listen, look what I've got. People standing there with bottles of vodka that they looted and stuff like that, drinking cans of beer, soft drinks, whatever, they were just standing there to the police going, fuck off, like that. Seen them there, TV under one arm, dragging a suitcase like that, standing there, yeah, what are you gonna fucking do? And there was nothing that the police could do. And it, and it was an overwhelming sense of power. We asked Cody to take us to some of his friends who took part in the looting so we could find out what happened and challenge them on whether they felt responsible for their actions. He was just a part of a big mob. He was just, I don't know, just cause as much trouble as you can. And who organised it? Was it a collective, a community? All of it was on Facebook. Yeah. That's it. That's I think, loads I think, of kids getting together. Yeah. Then it's come together. If it wasn't for Facebook, people wouldn't be able to keep. If it wasn't for the black. But for anything the, for with the... a chat line, it got round. Yeah. MSN, Bebo, Twitter, anything, yeah. it got to that. It all My went round. As well. Everyone's got together in town and it's just kicked off. No yeah. one's is just lead it. It's a load of kids and that have just got together. It, it was a lot better than sex. It was better than anything. You just couldn't describe it because you was in the atmosphere and you knew. It might not happen again, so you could just do it then and get away with it. And so, because I was just chilling first, uh, the windows go through, just put me straight up, belly on, in shops, and just went from there. Every shop got taken out, satisfied to join in, get what I want. And what did you get? Me, I got a TV, enough money, jewelry, clothes, and that's it. Uh, Were the door open? Were the windows smashed, or did you smash them? No, we ripped the shutters off. We ripped the shutters off, got in them open, took ripping them, took some stuff out of it. And how did that make you feel? How did that make me feel? I, I, was, bu I was buzzing, mate, yeah. just smashing windows and police cars and stuff. And it must have felt, you know, very commanding and powerful that you could smash a window, grab a TV, and know you could walk past the policeman and nothing would happen. Yeah, because there was too many of us. They wouldn't have just jumped one of them because the police would have just got jumped on. Okay, walking off with a TV is not just one of you walking off. There's a big group walking away with TV, so you know they're not going to stop you. And did you walk past a group of police officers with TVs and things in your hands? Yeah. yeah. People were brazen. People were very brazen. There was people without masks and ballets on that were running in and out of shops because they just... They, they, that night, it was like he was invincible. What's that? I will remember this. So much to tell the grandkids, yeah, eh? So much yeah. to tell the kids when I'm older. Every time I just go back into town, I'll just think, 
the shops got smashed up in 2011 by all of us. Just laugh about everything.